I greet you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I am Brother Hosanna David. Welcome to today's Bible study. And I want to talk about maintaining God's presence. I want us to read Deuteronomy chapter 23, 12-14. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, and it shall be when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therein, and shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee, and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore, shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. This is the word of the Lord. We have been talking about the presence of God for some days now, and I want to talk about maintaining God's presence. A lot of people ask God to follow them, but they don't know what it means to maintain the presence of God. It takes a second to kickstart a relationship, but it takes the whole of eternity, the whole of one's lifetime to keep that relationship. Maintaining a relationship could be tedious, very, very difficult. One of the things that will help in maintaining a relationship, one of the things that helps is knowing what the person likes and what the person dislikes. If, so long as you know the rules uh, guiding the relationship, you will be able to maintain that relationship. So here in Exodus chapter 23, God told the children of Israel that my presence is going with you and for my presence to continue to abide with you, you must do this thing. The angel of God was with the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 23, uh, 20 to 21. We are told that God said he was going to send his angel uh, to go with the Israelites. And in Deuteronomy 23, there was a challenge. What was the challenge? Remember the children of Israel were eating free quail, free manna, free food, meat from heaven. And many of them ate. And then they were messing up the camp. As they ate, as they were eating, they were messing up the camp. They had no former toilets. And then God said, it shall be a law among you that you should have a paddle. Uh, let it be a, a part of your practice that you will have something like a shovel, like uh, a spade, that when you go out to ease yourself, dig the ground, and after releasing your waste, you turn around and cover it. Why? Because my angel, which is the presence of God, the angel of God, is always around, watching over you to deliver your enemies into your hand and also to deliver you from the hands of your enemies. So you must make your camp holy. This is physical holiness. This is not even spiritual holiness. Physically. Uh, I, I know that a lot of Christians will say, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And even to the point of defiling their own body, they say it doesn't matter. No wonder a lot of Christians are living below the line. Uh, Christianity is a, it's all about experience, personal experience with God. It is a personal relationship with God. That is why we refer to our relationship with Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. We say, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. It is a personal thing. If you do not experience him personally, then experiencing him in 
uh, as a body, body of believers, will become difficult because um, we have to have a personal relationship with him and maintain that personal relationship with God. The children of Israel were messing up the camp and the angel of the Lord, he was not dwelling there with them physically. He was someone that we are not seeing physically. So he was in form of a spirit, but he had a challenge, a spirit being, having a challenge, dwelling with the children of Israel. This is not adultery. This is not fornication. This is not murder. This is not idol worship. This is physical environment. I want to ask you a question. Do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? If the God of heaven and earth could have challenge with physical environment, how much more the very temple that he lives, the very temple that he dwells? Question yourself. How do you see? Let, now let me tell you briefly an experience I had some time ago. When I was in St. Andrew's Cathedral in Worry, serving as a pastor, uh, I had a lot of things doing. And I used artificial leg. I had transtibia, transtibia amputation 2010. And I was staying alone, even as I was working as a pastor, and it was not really easy for me. So I, I was doing my laundry myself, do my do grocery shopping, do everything. I do my cooking myself, everything myself. And there was a time that my kitchen was messed up. I couldn't wash my plates. And then one day I was sleeping that same period where I had a lot of things to do. My kitchen, my place were unwashed. The Lord spoke to me and, and then he showed me my kitchen and he said, look at your kitchen. Look at how dirty your plates are. Wherever my spirit lives must be kept clean. He talked about the physical state of where I was living. It's not that there were maggots and everywhere was smelling, not that kind of situation, but my kitchen was not clean because I had a lot of things, I, I had a lot doing and I must make sure I do my office work. I used to go to the office every blessed day, except Saturday. And most Saturdays we used to have, many of the Saturdays we used to have weddings. Except Thursday that was my off, off day. And even the Thursday, I was interesting. God cares about our physical environment. He cares a lot about it. He cares about our body also. We are the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. We are the temple of God. The spirit of God lives inside of us. So if we must maintain the presence of God always, we must do the very things that will retain him and stop doing the things that will scare him away, that will drive God away. We can drive God away from us. We can accept him and we can drive him away. James chapter 4, 7 and 8 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. Draw close to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. We have our own responsibilities to play. We have our own role to play. Receiving Christ into our lives does not mean that when we repent, we have to go and sleep. Just the way you work on your, you work on your relationship, marital relationship. You make sure you, you take time to think, how do I, how do I go about this issue so that it would affect my wife? How do I go about this issue so that it would affect my husband? You think critically. 
you invest into the relationship. Look at uh, Exodus chapter 23, verses 20 and 21. It says, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. We can provoke God. We can provoke the angelic presence with us and make him depart from us. In the passage we read uh, in the uh, Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23, verses 12, 13, and 14, the Bible makes it very clear that if we drive the angel of God that is with us away, our lives could be endangered. He said, verse 14 says, For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp, number one, to deliver thee, number two, to give up thine enemies before thee. So you must make your camp holy. I tell you the truth, there is no single person who has given their lives to Christ that will cleanse their lives that God will not release an angel to. Some of us, we have used worldliness to fire our angels. Some of us, we have done all sorts of things and the presence of God is no longer with us. A lot of people have sleep paralysis, witches come to oppress them, witches and wizards pursue them in the dream. They, they have all sorts of experience because they have succeeded in destroying the temple of God where the spirit of God is supposed to dwell. This is not supposed to be so. How many of us retain the presence of God today? How many of us have the presence of God with us? Wherever we go, the Spirit of God is with us. How many of us? It takes a second to kickstart a relationship, but it takes a, a lifetime to maintain that relationship. But unfortunately, we are living in a time where Many of our preachers, we say, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And the teachers pray, pray, pray. They blame you for passing through what you are passing through. They tell you probably you are not praying enough. Probably you, 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 you don't have faith. But there are critical issues that we need to deal with. Is God in you? Is God inside of me? If you have the Spirit of God in you, you feel Him. There are times you feel you feel the presence. You feel Him. How many of us are suffering today because we lack the presence of God? Are you dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? Are you abiding in Him? Is He abiding in you? Remember, Jesus Christ said, Abide in me and I in you. If we, must, if we must succeed, he must abide in us. He said, without me, you can do nothing. We are living in a dark world. We are living in a world that is taken over by demonic darkness. So we need the presence of God. Wherever we go, at every time, we need God's presence. We are going to continue with maintaining God's presence. And I will tell you some of the things we need to do, apart from keeping the house holy, keeping our bodies, the temple of God holy. Thank you for watching. In case you have not subscribed, please subscribe. Hosanna David. I've been doing uh, daily teachings and I believe that those of you who are watching, you are blessed. And um, I also want to tell you that as you watch, please share these videos. Send them to people. The truth is scarce. A lot of things we hear today are mainly lies. Only few people speak the truth. And I tell you the truth so long as this is the word of God you hear today. It is not about self. It's not about denomination. It's not about uh, cajoling you. It's not about um, telling you sweet things, but how you can get your way back to God and strengthen your relationship with God. I know this is the truth. Nothing but the truth. Please share the truth. Don't share lies. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.